Amen. And with your spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Father Whitlock, Father Becker, Reverend Fathers, uh, and the honored guests, and my dear brothers. Uh, so as most of you should know, uh, I'm from the Diocese of Sioux Falls. For new men, that's a hint. Sioux Falls Diocese. Um, and I have a great pride, a great love for my diocese, as do the rest of my brothers from the diocese, and as we all should for our home diocese. Uh, and I've just always had this love, and it's fostered even coming into seminary, especially coming into seminary. Um, just uh, getting to know a lot of the priests in my diocese and seeing how, how great, how holy so many of them are. Uh, this last summer, spending in a parish uh, and getting to see the holiness, the greatness of the people even, too, um, has just increased uh, a love for my home diocese and, uh, and the pride for my diocese. And for me, when I was thinking about my priest hero, that all led back to one man, uh, the shepherd of all these people, the shepherd of these priests, the lady. Um, and so I've chosen uh, Bishop Paul Swain as my priest hero. I'd like to honor him today. Uh, obviously, as a bishop, there are many qualities, there are many reasons that someone is appointed bishop. Uh, so I could probably go on for forever, but I'll just keep it down to five minutes, as I'm supposed to, so uh, hopefully. <laughs> But I just picked a couple qualities, um, really qualities of fatherhood that I see uh, within Bishop Swain. And first, that is his, his caring heart, uh, and is really his care for uh, everyone in the diocese, uh, and especially I've seen of us seminarians. Uh, and my first experience with Bishop Swain was at our first seminary gathering before my new man year, and I think first thing I remember him saying, and that he reiterates every time uh, we have a gathering, either in the summer or right after Christmas, is that his desire for us, uh, what he wants for us most, is that uh, we know God's will for us. And for me, that really reveals his caring heart for, for us as seminarians, uh, because he knows that our happiness, uh, the way that we will be fulfilled the most, is in the Father's will. Um, and so he reiterates that over and over. And for me, that's given me a freedom to discern my own vocation, uh, which I, I very much appreciate. And I know my brothers in the diocese appreciate very much as well. Uh, and along with that, during our meetings, our seminary and gatherings, Bishop Swain always sets aside about a half hour for us to be able to meet with him. And those, those meetings are something I always look forward to. They're the highlight of my year. Um, and I just... Sitting with Bishop, it's, again, you just see his caring heart. And he really listens intently. And he really has a listening heart. And he always asks, how are you doing? How are your studies? Uh, and the one thing that I really enjoy the most is that he lights up when you share what Christ is doing in your heart. And he really enjoys hearing how Christ is working through seminary, how he's working to form you know, me as a man and, God willing, as a priest one day. Uh, and so that's just his, he's very caring, very listening in that way, and it's something I very much appreciate. And then another aspect, um, another fatherly aspect that I see within Bishop Swain is his sacrifice, uh, his service, especially to the people of the diocese. Uh, and if you don't know, uh, the Diocese of Sioux Falls is quite large. Uh, it's about, I don't know, six or seven hours from, from one corner, the northwestern corner, to the southeastern corner down by Sioux Falls. Uh, so there's a lot of ground to cover as a bishop, and I'm very much edified by uh, Bishop Swain, and I came up with a saying that Bishop Swain makes his car his cross. Uh, and I, I really do believe that to be true, because this last summer I saw it in a couple ways, but in very many ways. Uh, he traveled to Pierre, not, not Pierre, but, but Pierre, uh, the capital of the diocese of the the state, sorry, uh, and it's probably it's probably what four or five hours from Sioux Falls, just one way. So he goes and it's for this fishing tournament to raise money for seminarians, and he travels all the way out, says mass, is in his cassock, and it's blazing hot, it's the middle of summer, 
and travels out five hours, stays in, in Pier for the night, and just is with uh, the people of the diocese out there supporting the seminarians. And then the week before, he also traveled to another fishing tournament that was in Big Stone. And I think he actually brought some sisters with him from Sioux Falls. And so he's just very good at, at spreading the faith and um, bringing a little bit of Sioux Falls, you know, the sisters up to the northern part of the diocese. Big Stone's in the, the pretty much the far northern part of the diocese. Uh, but he really does, he makes his, his car his cross and just going out, um, being the shepherd, smelling like the sheep, um, and sacrificing his time in that way. And within one week, he traveled 18 hours just to, for a couple of fishing tournaments. Um, and so these are just a few examples um, of Bishop Swain and his sacrifice and his care. Uh, and for me, in these examples, he has really shown me that to be a holy man, to be, God willing, one day a holy priest, I don't need to speak super eloquently. I don't need to memorize Latin. I care. And for that example, I'm very grateful to the bishop and is the reason why I've chosen him as my priest hero. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and forever.